الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين اياك نعبد واياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم وصراط الذين انعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين امين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد الفاتح المولد الخاتم لما سبق لنا صلى الله عليه وسلم هدي لنا صراط المستقيم وعلى اله حق قدره ومقدار العظيم ورضي الله تعالى عن اصحاب رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ولا حول ولا قوه الا بالله العلي العظيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فقد قال الله تبارك في القرآن العظيم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل تعالى واتل ما حرم ربكم عليكم الا تشركوا به شيئا وبالوالدين احسانا وقال صلى الله عليه وسلم علم ان خير الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدى هدى محمد وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار وكما قال عليه الصلاه والسلام Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuhu Alhamdulillah We praise and thank Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala Once again who has given us an opportunity To gather in his house In order to um, Remember him And engage in the Dhikr and the remembrance of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala Which Allah declared In the last revelation sent to mankind The Holy Quran He said Ya ayuhal ladhina amanu إذا نودي للصلاة من يوم الجمعة فاسعوا إلى ذكر الله وذروا البيع أو يو بيبول إيمان when a call is made um, on the day of gathering which is the day of الجمعة um, for the purposes of صلاة of worshiping Allah of calling on Allah of remembering Allah Allah says فاسعوا so hasten Uh, it means it's a, the word fasaw is an active uh, verb that describes do what you can do and whatever it takes to get to that place of assembly of the remembrance of Allah wadarul bay'in and Allah says and also leave all uh, forms of um uh, business and occupation um Allah says this is better for you if only you knew Alhamdulillah every week we recite this verse because Shaykh Ibrahim also used to recite this verse every week on the day of Jumu'ah which is part of uh, reminding us and, and, and uh, about our obligation towards our Lord Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala and that is that it is a a firmly established pillar of Islam and practice of Islam to gather on the day of gathering is to leave everything and gather for the sake of Allah wa ta'ala. Um, there are many things that are happening around the world that make uh, may make a person to forget Allah and may make a person to overlook um, the the existence of Allah and the fact that Allah is real and the fact that this life is very short we are only here for few moments and when our time has come we go to a permanent place of abode uh, a place where Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala told us in the holy quran he says bal tu'thiruna al-hayata ad-dunya wal akhiratu khayrun wa but you prefer the life of this world However, the Akhirah is more better and also it is everlasting. It means that once you move to the next life, there is no end uh, to the life uh, to the life there. Um, today we will recite some verses of the Holy Quran, um, which uh, uh, Shaykh Ibrahim Radilaw Ta'ala uh, mentioned them in the Sa'adat Al-Anam. Um, as a special uh, lecture which he gave but also 
according to many Mufassirin, they say that these verses, they, 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 they composed of 10 different uh, uh, traditions or 10 different things in which, or aspects in which Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala addressed and you find them, they say in any, any book that claims to be a divinely revealed book, even before the revelation of the Holy Quran, they must contain these aspects because it is, uh, it is the essence of Basharia, of humanity. It is, the, it is the essence of humanity that anybody who is, a, is part of humanity and, um, and they live in a, uh, some sort of a tradition, they will find this, uh, uh, these aspects. And these aspects are, are revealed in the Holy Quran. And that's why uh, you hear that uh, in the Bible there is a speak of the Ten Commandments of Allah. And then in the Holy Quran also Allah revealed this, uh, the, the same aspect. But the Mufassirin, they speak, they say, you will find this uh, across all traditions that uh, divinely revealed. Uh, not just only what is in the Holy Quran, because this they contain the diff, the, the, the guidance that if there is a uh, a slippage in any one of them or in all of them, then that is a definition of fitna and facade in the society, and that is the the root and the foundation of all forms of evil in the society, and that's why it's important to. To, 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 to always, all the time, to try to remind ourselves about these aspects which Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala speaks about. So Allah revealed to his messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said he was ordered and he was commanded to, to tell the believing Muslims. He said, Qul, say to them, O Muhammad, Ta'ala wa atlu ma harrama rabbukum alikum. Come, I will recite to you, I will inform you, I will tell you what is it that your Lord has made sacred? What is it that your Lord has prohibited you from doing? Because the, the word harama has got the meaning of sacredness, like we say the, the, the Holy Kaaba is, a, is, a, is, an inviolable, is an inviolable place. And because we say it is sacred, and the word sacred is haram, but also haram also means uh, to overstep a boundary, meaning that you are not allowed to cross that boundary because you, it's a, it's a, it's a uh, don't, don't violate things that Allah has kept, they, they leave their sanctity alone like that. And so those uh, terms, uh, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam explained in a very eloquent manner to the uh, Muslims and then also uh, explaining the different aspects of these ayat and these verses. So he says, come, I will recite to you the meaning atlu ma harrama rabbukum, what your Lord has made sacred or has made haram alikum, above you or over you. And then the first thing that Allah wa ta speaks about and he says, Allah tu shiriku bihi shay'an, don't associate anything with him. Don't take anything equal to Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. Treat Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala as the as your Lord and as the only one that must be obeyed to. So don't associate any partners with him because association of partners with Allah means that a person now will have more than two lords, uh, I mean more than one Lord. So sometimes he will uh, obey one Lord, sometimes he will obey another Lord. But the other Lord is a, is a fake Lord. Because the only true Lord is Allah, and that is the meaning of the kalima, La ilaha illallah. There is no true uh, deity or being or anything that can ever be worshipped beneath the skies, beneath the earth, above the skies, anywhere in the whole universe, illallah, except Allah. That's what La ilaha illallah means. There is nobody that truly deserves to be worshipped besides Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. So Allah is saying, don't associate any partners to him don't associate anything to him so focus on your lord because allah is the one who created you when they ask rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam what is the greatest of a kabair uh, what is the biggest of uh, uh, things that can offend allah wa ta'ala 
the Prophet وسلم, said, it is to associate anything with Allah wa Taala as a Lord while He created you, and that is the the biggest thing. And you see it it manifest in many different forms in in our society. Um, you will see it when when a person is uh, it, it seems like his life is constricted, and then he starts uh, looking for something or somewhere that sometimes may lead that person to uh, to violate this specific command of Allah Taala. Is that? Allah don't have any other ilah except Allah wa ta'ala. Um, because all our life, uh, our lives are full of uh, tests. Allah said, uh, do you think that we created you and we will leave you untested for your claim that uh, you, you, you believe in us? Right. If you claim to believe in Allah, you will receive some tests. And when those tests come, don't do, go, don't go and, and, and abandon Allah as if you know Allah is something that you can choose. Yes, while you live in this life, in this life, you have a, 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 a mind and a, a willpower Allah has given you <coughs> to do what you will with it. But whatever you choose to do with it, it has a consequence. If you choose that which is good, it will lead you to success. And if you choose that which is not good, it will lead you to uh, uh, it will lead you to to, uh, to to losing to failure. Then Allah Tabaraka wa Taala continues and He says, "What um, uh, and you must be nice to your parents. You must be good to your parents, and." The way and the manner in which Allah wa Taala has said this, um, it is in such a way that um, it uh, there the is the opposite of being nice to your parents is to is to be is to be bad to your parents. So if Allah orders you to be nice to your parents, it also automatically means that you can't be bad to your parents. Because uh, uh, not so that means if you you avoid to be bad to your parents, it is not that is not enough. If you only avoid to be bad against your parents, that is not enough. But you, Allah orders you that not only you should avoid to do evil against your parents, but you must do good to them. That is what Allah orders us in this in in, in this ayah. That. Uh, and and, 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 the, the, and the, that's the reason why he skipped the, according to many Mufassirin, when you look at the usage of the language, that's the reason why he, he, it was not necessary for him to include the, the, that aspect because that command is already inside the one of doing good. If you are ordered to be good to, to your parents, means that you can't be bad to them because to be bad to them is worse. And also to be bad to them only and don't do good to them is also not enough. So you have to be good to the uh, what you call to the parents, and once and, and when you uh, what you see, what is happening in our in our time, uh, you see that uh, uh, parents and by extension elders because parents you have the parents, your biological parents you also have your your spiritual parents, your spiritual parents are those uh, people or who guide you to Allah. And your biological parents are those whom Allah He used them to bring you in this world. And they, according to many ulama and awliya, they say even the spiritual parents they take even a higher priority from this hadith of the Prophet وسلم, that because they will never order you except what Allah and His Rasul uh, has ordered you, and that includes to be nice to your biological parents. And so the Prophet وسلم, said, none of you believe until I am more loved to him than his children, than his parents, than all the people put together. Because Rasulullah is our uh, spiritual parent. Because he guides us to that which Allah wants us to do. And that also includes that which uh, uh, to be good to the parents. But in any, in any case, in this ayah, the emphasis is made is that you, you, you uh, be, be, be nice, uh, what you call it, uh, uh, to parents. 
And that means in other ayahs in the Holy Quran, Allah says, Wala uffin lahuma. Don't even uh, make the uff sound. Forget to talk back to your parents. Some people, you know, when their parents try to talk to them, they talk back against them. Allah says, don't even make a, an oof sound, a sound that uh, 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 indicates dissatisfaction with your parents. Right? But you must rather be merciful to them and make prayer for them because they looked after you when you were a baby, when you were small. They did all of these things. Lower, put down that wing. Lower the wing and put down that wing and humble yourself and, and, and be nice and, and do good uh, to the parents. In fact, um, yeah, uh, yesterday I was even going through some Isaac and Ezekiel, uh, the, the proverbs and idioms in the Zulu tradition, right? And one of the Isaac, um, I just forget <coughs> the actual phrase itself, but it says that uh, when you remember it, yeah. In your Nishayela, about cool. About cool. Yeah, yes, that is that is Isaac, right? That is uh, w w the little success that you have. The first person that you go to report to is your parents. Anything that you have that Allah has blessed you with or whatever it is, you go to the elders and ensure because they are the ones that will guide you, that have been guiding you and they will guide you further on how to complete and be successful in your journey. Nowadays, people don't do that. Now the people, they just say, I know myself, I know my rights, I am clever, I am educated, I am this and I am that and I have this and I have that and therefore I don't have to talk to my parents about any, about any of these things. I live my life, you know. There's even songs about it, it's my life, you know. Um, there, there's even slogans about, you know, many of these things that we see today that are, are sending very uh, corrupt uh, messages um, so we should try and be mindful of these uh, different types of uh, ills that we see in our society and also we should be careful where we get our education from because also part of the place where we get our education it is this um, uh, uh, what you call movies that we uh, that we see like uh, there was a message that was passing through recently. They would say, you know that movie, uh, Tazan? You know, when you look at Tazan, you know, it's an innocent movie, but today it also uh, promotes like a nakedness because Tazan is a, star, is, a, is a star in that movie. So uh, that is teaching your, your, your child that it's, you know, it's okay to be, uh, uh, what you call, to be half naked. And that's why you see all the children and everybody else, they're all naked because they, 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 they no longer are taking the advice of their parents. And then you have um, Cinderella. Cinderella is an innocent movie that people, you know, watch, but Cinderella comes to her home in the midnight. And that's why today you find children, they, they, it's okay to come after dark. In those days, you, you would never come after, the, what you call after, as soon as, before Ilang al you, 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 you are in the yard now. So because those types of teachings, you used to get them from parents, but people don't live with parents anymore. They don't regard their parents as the, as the people to take guidance from. And that's why Allah wa Ta'ala, after the greatest sin that a person can commit is to associate partners to him. The next sin that he, he mentions, he says that you must do good to the parents. If you look at this uh, uh, Pinocchio uh, movie, that character speaks lies all the time. He speaks lies all the time, lie upon lie. The Prophet Sallallahu they ask him, can a believer steal? He said, yes, he can steal. Can a believer do this? Yes, he can do this. But can a believer speak lies? The Prophet says, no, it is impossible for a believer to speak lies. The quality of speaking lies is so severe against Allah and against the teaching of the Prophet Sallallahu that the Prophet Sallallahu said, it is impossible to find somebody who claims to be a believer and he speaks lies. Because speaking lies cannot come in, because lies is falsehood. And lies is what makes shaitan to be shaitan. That's why shaitan is known as al-Kazab. 
the one who speaks lies excessively. So, and that is the main characteristic of the shaitan because he deceives. Somebody who deceives and he's cunning, you know, he's, he's, he's speaking all this uh, language. And then you have, uh, like in our time now, you have Batman. You know, when you watch the Batman, the speed at which he drives is like 500 miles per hour, right? And that's what young people do now. As soon as they get lessons, they get onto the road and then they just put that accelerator flat because you want to be like Batman, right? This is something that you're learning through all this kind of, uh, what you call, teaching. Then you have Aladdin, who is the king of thieves, you know. And when they show him, he will go around to steal, you know, things and steal this and steal that. As a child, you know, you watch this thing, this is a teaching. And that's why it becomes easy for people to steal. I know it's okay if I steal this. If you start stealing small, then it goes bigger. And when you grow big, and then you also start stealing bigger things. Because you learned this thing from an early age. So all of these things, and then you have uh, Romeo and Juliet, you know, who, who kills themselves for the sake of love, you know. It's Tando Sam, it's like, I'm, you, you, you rather don't stay at home, you rather uh, disobey everybody in your community. Because as long as you know Mutuam, as long as I have my, my partner, Upadewam, it's like, if something happens to the Romeo or Juliet, it's like, you know, Sisonke, you know, we don't care about anything else, about uh, everything. All of these things is what we see. And then you have then your Harry Potter, which is teaching magic, you know, and all these things. And now you see a lot of people are interested in all these magical things. So where are all these movies coming from? Then you have Mickey and Minnie. That's, they are all on another level, right? So they are just more than friends. They are not just friends, right? They, <laughs> No, they, 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 something else. And then you find a sleeping beauty, you know, completely lazy, you know, don't want to do anything. And these children are learning these characteristics and these things. Nobody wants to, why? Because that, that's where you're getting your education from. And then you have a Dumbo who gets drunk all the time, right? Now, the, 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 now the festive season is starting. You will see children with uh, small ex exams, especially next week. As of next week, you, you will be seeing like lots of tumbles outside. Right? People will be like, no, it's, you know, you, you must relieve yourself, you know, you know, you know, you must celebrate, you must enjoy, you must do all of these things. So uh, be nice to your parents because your, 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 your parents, okay, the one last one I want to show is, I want to talk about this, is Snow White. Snow White, He's got seven boyfriends or like seven, uh, what you call, uh, uh, guys that, uh, dwarves that he lives with. And that's literally what you find today, right? So if, if all these things, are, you know, they come across as a joke, as a story, you know, you, but no, there's a deeper meaning and a deeper teaching there that is going on, that it's okay for a woman to live with seven people. They will cover it by living in the same house, but you know, now they live in different houses. You understand? And that's why all these diseases are spreading everywhere. And, 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 and that's the reason why I'm, um, I'm, I'm, I'm just talking about this thing so that uh, we can appreciate why these 10 different things that Allah talks about in all the divinely revealed scriptures, right? It's, uh, it's, it's good to, uh, to always remember them all the time because they are the, the if, if these things are unchecked then they will be fitna in the community they will be fitna in the society right the one last one I want to talk about we only managed to get to three I was hoping that uh, I was going to get through all <coughs> ten but Allah wa ta wa ta says he says he um, um, says Allah says, وَلَا تَقْرَبُوا أَلْفَوَاحِشَ مَا ظَهَرَ مِنْهَا وَمَا بطن. Don't come near zina. Right? Allah says, مَا ظَهَرَ مِنْهَا وَمَا بَطَنَا Whatever is outward uh, and whatever, whatever is inward. Sayyiduna Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhu says that in the days of Jahiliya, zina used to be committed uh, in, the, the, uh, in secret and they never used to find any problem with it if it is done in secret. But they will look down as an ugly thing if people are doing it openly. 
Right, that, that, that was in the days of Jahiliya. But when Allah Taala revealed these ayats in the Holy Quran, He specifically meant it. He says, "Mada hara min ha wa ma batana." So the outward of it as well as the inward of it. So don't commit zina. Zina is something that is happening across all levels and all segments of society in many different various forms. And that is part of the reason why there is so much of fitna and corruption in the societies today. Because a lot of it has to do with this element of the committing of zina. Committing zina is not just about taking somebody and going to a private place and just doing that. Their homes of people are getting destroyed. You go to M7 Zin, you know, your workplaces. A, 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 a man starts to have a relationship with a woman. A woman starts to have a relationship with a, 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 a what you call it, with, with someone else's man there. All of these things, they cause you to lose focus. You're no longer doing your role as a man in the house or also as a woman, you're no longer doing your role because you are no longer focused because someone else is distracting you. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has mentioned concerning zina. He said, um, well, well, uh, uh, he said they, they, uh, because Allah has mentioned in this ayah, he says, "Wala taqrabu al fawahisha ma zahara minha wa ma batana." Don't even come near al fawahisha, which is zina. The outwardness of it, as well as the in, 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 in what you call inwardness or what you call of it, is that the the, the other limbs of the body also commit zina. He said. Well, ainaini, another, another row, a zina ainaini, another row. The zina of the eyes is to look. To look at somebody you're not supposed to be, uh, somebody who is a potential person that you could get married to, to look at them in the eye. And, 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 and to look at them, that, the Prophet Sallallahu said, that is the zina of the eyes. And to listen to their talking, that is the zina of the, of, 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 of the, of the, of, of, of the ears. And to and, 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 and to kiss them, and that is the zina of the nose. So all of these things are all different types of zina. And to touch them, that is the zina of the hand. And to walk towards them, that is the zina of the feet. And to think about it, when the al qalbu, the, 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 the zina of the heart, what you call hadith al qalbi. You know, you're still fantasizing and thinking about it. You keep your heart busy with that person. That is the zina of the heart. Rasulullah said all of this in, 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 in one hadith. And then in the end of the hadith, he says, which is meaning the actual private parts, it either it confirms it or it denies it. It confirms it when a person actually commits zina. But before all of these things happen, there, there is a slow thing that happens that lead, lead, one thing leads to the other. You know, you know we grew up in Malukshin or even anywhere else. You see in Tomazana, we are Flata, we are Kuluma. The, the, the idea and the end game is to get to the pants. That is the, that is the end game. You'll be talking, you'll be doing all of these things and then up until it gets to a point where and you, you are not married. The, this is causing a lot of fitna in our society, in our, in our community. But it doesn't mean uh, the men and women can work together like it happens in the corporate. No, it doesn't mean that. To work as a business, that is allowed in Islam. You do it. The, 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 uh, the ayah of the Quran was revealed when one of the Sahabas of the Prophet uh, was alone in a room with a woman he was doing business with. And the business became something else and they started kissing each other. And this companion of the Prophet Sallallahu he went to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, you know, something very terrible happened. Then when he explained what happened, he says, no, I was doing a business with this woman and then I'm not married to, he's not my husband, but her husband was gone out. Um, um, I'm, I'm not her husband and we ended up, you know, you know, uh, kissing, you know, and, and doing those things. And, and that's when these ayats were revealed. Allah said, establish the Salah in the ends of the, the, of, of the day, the, the two ends of the day and in the middle because the, the, the performance of good deeds you, you the Hebrew say you add, it will wash away all the bad deeds right and that's why and then the, 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 what you call these ayahs were what you call were revealed so to, to encourage all of these things but what I'm trying to say is that all of these things 
there are rules meaning that it, it, you can work with a, a, a opposite gender you can work with but as long as there are boundaries you know you are not found talking alone secretly with somebody there has to be people around and it has to be strictly business it can't be about private life it can't be about hey so then you couldn't mean that but you know that as patelanang and a business they, are, they have nothing to do with what you, you are doing as a business all other forms of talking and listening or, or anything like that even this thing you would imagine so shut down if i don't go and talk to them no that, that is not how our prophet sallam has taught us if you are interested in a woman you go to the family of the woman you talk to them and the family of the woman they will give you permission or they will deny you the permission but you don't have a right to go and violate someone else's daughter or son to go and talk to them in private that is what allah and his rasul are talking about this these are part of the 10 major points that are very destructive. To, if we don't look at them in a, in a society, in a community, they, they, they have potential to destroy the, 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 the fabric of the society. And that's the reason why there are a lot of fitness that we see around, because all of these traditions are no longer being practiced even by the old religions that used to have them. Even uh, in, in, in those days, uh, and, and now there's a lot that is happening now. And um, uh, actually, let me not just not uh, carry on because of time. Inshallah, when we have time, I will just, just um, uh, expand on this. Maybe to do it again. Assalamu alaikum.